great. Uh, hope you're doing fine. Uh, just listen to, to your new album, to the new Catatoni album. I was very curious to see what your next move could be because we're used to uh, listen to new things from Catatoni in, in every album, every single album. So I'm always eager to know what the future holds for us. Yeah, I mean, yeah. every album we try to do something maybe a little bit different, but at the same time we have our, our style that we, you know, feel comfortable with. We, uh, we definitely uh, enjoy doing what we're doing. So I think we haven't done any major changes. It's, it's probably more of, of nuances. Um, so it's, uh, it's not a big change, uh, but mm -hmm. it's, it's a new album. That's what we usually say. Yeah, but you, you, you have been in Peaceville since 1999 and tonight's decision. And what made you move to Napalm Records? Did it have to do with Bloodbath? who moved to Napalm too? Uh, not really. I mean, our contract with Peaceville had ended and we thought, you know, we realized there is a lot of interest for the band from other labels. And sometimes you need to try something new and, and try uh, going for a change. Uh, I mean, the same thing was with Bloodbath and we ended up signing both bands on the same label, but we were in touch with this different labels for, for both bands. But Napalm seemed to have the most, you know, uh, the best plans for for respective bands at this point. So we just want to do something new, see if we can reach out more with the music. I think Napalm definitely have the muscle for, you know, uh, getting the, the band to reach out uh, further, definitely. Mm -hmm. uh, the first thing that we notice is that uh, Sky Vault of Stars is the second consecutive album, which might as well has been uh, your solo album, as you have written all the songs and all the lyrics, of course. Why Anders didn't contribute at all this time as well? Um, I think this time it, it's because I kept writing music uh, during the whole uh, of the pandemic uh, just to keep myself sane, pretty much. Uh, I didn't have a plan. Um, I wasn't sure where, it's, where it was going to end up. Uh, I mean, I felt it, it's catatonia material, but it's, uh, you know, we have no deadlines, no nothing. I just write, wrote music because I wanted to and, and Anders didn't do that. So maybe he thought that, you know, since I was writing, he could probably start writing uh, later on. But as it turned out, I, I all of a sudden I, I had material for an whole album. So and that's what we recorded. I mean. For the next one, I I hope that he will, uh, you know, contribute more than he's done on the, in the last few albums. Mm -hmm. uh, what did you? Uh, but but this thing happened to the previous album as well, the city uh, city burials. You wrote yeah. music yourself, but it wasn't a pandemic back then. No, it wasn't. Um, but Anders has. I mean, he's moved a little bit more towards the sort of the, the management thing of the band. He's mm -hmm. more into that business side while I'm, I'm still in the, the musical side. Uh, I'm not saying that he has quit music uh, at all. I mean, he's still a creative guy. He's, he's written a lot of stuff for the new Bloodbath record, but mm -hmm. um, uh, it's just something that goes up and down, I guess. And, and yeah. you know, as soon as he's ready to come back to the Catatonia writing, I certainly welcome that. Yeah. Um, why Sky Void of Stars? Does it have to do with uh, Oscar Wilde's phrase, we're all in the gutter, however some of us are looking at the stars? Uh, it's a good phrase, but it's it's has nothing to do with this title, I think. Uh, for me, it, it represents lack of navigation. Uh, you know, back in the day when people would navigate with the stars, uh, and if you can't do that, you, you're definitely uh, not knowing where you're going. So, and it's it's a feeling that I guess we all can feel uh, sometimes and feel um, sort of attached to not having a a, a clear path uh, where you're going. So it's it's a very open title. It's not meant to be mm -hmm. a meaning of for a 
a certain thing. It's it's more of a something that you can interpret in your own way. Yeah, and once again, a cover artwork full of ravens. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's become a, a, a symbol for us over the years. Um, I think you mentioned the album Tonight's Decision. That's where it's pretty much started. I think we uh, we felt that uh, the bird was, uh, you know, it, it was a great symbol for us. It could represent a lot of stuff that we feel that we we are attached to uh, as a band and as a as a creative outlet. And it's just been following us ever since, you know. And it it also makes uh, good art because birds especially those uh, raven kind of birds they're very beautiful to look at they they, uh, they look well in, in in pictures and artwork and stuff like that so it's it's just there it's it's continuing katatonic mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> uh, has always been a band constantly evol- evolving from the doom death metal of your beginnings to dark gothic metal and then more proggy and post rock uh phase um each of these changes is depicted through a change of your logo <laughs> oh, <you> yeah. <laughs> so w- whenever i ask someone uh, uh, do you like atatonia they say you know which uh, which logo do you like <laughs> which of, of catatonia era and it's do you think that this era of catatonia is the one you've been dreaming of music wise uh, it's hard to say. I mean, when I listen to it now, what we're doing at this very moment, I, I would say that. But still, I, I don't know, because I still feel there is much more stuff to explore. Uh, there is, uh, as you say, we, we keep evolving and, and I want to keep doing that because it's what keeps us on our feet, on our toes as a band, you know, and, and trying to... Uh, always sort of challenge ourselves um but right now it's it's what i was dreaming about probably um but ask me again in a few years maybe <laughs> we have a different sound uh which is our our dream sound uh, at that yeah. time you know so we never know yeah it's always the dream sound and at the, at the particular at a particular uh time okay. yeah exactly and and also i don't think you should limit yourself in saying like this is the perfect sound. We don't have to cho- uh, chase it anymore because there might be even better stuff in the future waiting for us. This is a trap for many bands because they create their own unique sound and they stick to it. And, and it's not uh, evolution. It's sticking to a sound. Yeah, many I mean, it's, have done that. yeah, it's true. But, um, but some bands, I think, uh, don't need to, invo- uh, to ev- evolve. Okay, if we're uh, speaking about ACDC, for example, okay, they don't need to evolve, yeah. Exactly, ACDC, Motorhead, those kinds of bands. Yeah. Um, but the, the, the genre that we're in and the, the way that we have been perceiving music ever since the beginning is is always to try and find something new and exciting for us to, to embrace and also, you know, take further in terms of composition and... and uh, sound wise it's a it's a continual chase for for the perfect sound and i i you know as i said right now i'm super happy where we are but mm-hmm. i'm i'm also uh, very curious about the future still yeah. mm-hmm. uh having listened to the album uh, a few times i can definitely say that it has a unique flow that grabs you from the beginning and you don't want to press the skip button. I, I don't mean that it's my favorite Catatoni album or that all songs are top notch in my opinion. However, the overall sound is really captivating. Why did you choose this time to work with Jacob Hansen to do the production instead of you and Anders and not only deal with mixing and mastering because I think it has to do with, uh, with the final result. Yeah, I mean, we did the production uh, pretty much ourselves, but Jacob w- was more involved, um, especially with the drum recording. He he uh, had ideas and stuff. And I mean, he, he's a musician himself. Uh, we totally trust his opinions and stuff. He, uh, he's been around for a long time doing music. So, I mean, maybe there's a change there, but I, I wouldn't say it's a big one, uh, as me and Anders were still at the helm of, of the recording and the production process. 
Um, but you know, if uh, because uh, Jacob was was mixing the last album, but this time he was a little bit more um, involved. Um, you know, it's uh, it's always good to to uh, have having worked with someone and then coming back because you know what to expect and you know uh, the person. It's it's always a, a more smooth process. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it isn't mentioned anywhere in, in the press releases, but I, but I think that I heard Joel Ekelo from Soen in Impermanence. Is yeah, that's true. That's right. Why why did you decide to have him as a guest? And do you feel that Soen sound is very close to Caratonia? I mean, we're pretty close as bands, uh, music-wise. Uh, we also like Soen very much. We know the drummer, uh, Martin, since way back. Uh, we know Joel as well, and we have been talking about doing something together for, for quite some time. And when I wrote this very song, I thought, you know, maybe this is the perfect perfect moment to, to include uh, Joel. And it turned out that, in my opinion, this song was perfect for, for uh, you know, complementing both of our voices and, and having them uh, sort of reaching out towards each, each other. I think it's a, a, a beautiful uh, duet or, or mm. whatever it is. You know, I, I think it turned out really good. Did you did you think about adding uh, female voices in this album once again? We didn't. Um, we said that if we were going to include a guest, we wanted to be Joel on this one because, as I said, we, we've been talking about it with him for some time. So it mm. felt like a... a a right move to do. Mm -hmm. uh, you had been the first band to announce a pay-per-view live streaming concert during the pandemic, and you got backlash from the fans and every, many people because of this. However, a few months later, many bands did the same thing, more or less, without their fans bitching. <laughs> yeah, that's do true. You, do you think you were unlucky or just brave enough to do what you had in mind to support an album for which you wouldn't be able to tour anyway? I think we, um, because when we started thinking about it, it sounded like something that we wouldn't want to do. Um, but as we realized, you know, the whole pandemic thing is not going to be over for, for quite some time. Uh, we thought, you know, maybe this is uh, the best thing to do because we have no tours, we have no gigs scheduled. For how long we don't know, uh, so we wanted to try it. It's it's a brand new format, uh, and you know we we didn't have really anything to lose except for maybe some people saying that this is a shit thing to do, but I mean it it turned out good for us. It was fun to to be able to reach out a little bit to to the audience instead of just waiting and waiting for for anything to happen. So uh, I'm, I'm really happy that we did it. Um, it wasn't exactly what we expected uh, before the pandemic, that we would be doing something like that. But I'm, I'm super happy that we tried it. Uh, and as you said, many, many bands did it after us. And, and for a while there, it turned out to be the only, the only solution to, to reach out to people. Yeah, but many, many people uh, blamed you for that, for... Uh um having fans pay for this instead of you know i don't know what what might people uh what people may think that you know a musician can live without getting paid don't know what yeah i mean of course it it, it wasn't free of charge to uh, uh hire a studio hire a, a team that was filming the band so the only solution was to to have people pay for it. And, and that's what you do also when you play concerts. It's the same thing. And if you don't want to pay for it, that's fine as well. You know, so mm -hmm. I don't really get why, why it would be a, a, a bad thing to do to actually uh, charge money for something that you... That you have paid for. Yeah, exactly. Uh, did did the release of City Burials at that particular time frame add to your decision to leave Peaceville? No, it wasn't because of 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 that. I mean, they did a good job trying to to get the album out there. It it I trust it hasn't been a, an easy task 
to release an album during a pandemic. So it had nothing to do with that. It's just that, you know, the contract ended and, and we we okay. realized we've been on Peaceful since 1998 and maybe it's time to do something new. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a tradition during the end of the year for the bands to to post a Spotify icon, Spotify picture, mentioning how many listeners they had and so on. Catatonia had 19 and a half million streams, which is really an amazing number. However, how satisfied are you by the income you have from the streams? And how do you see the fact that everything seems to be turning digital in music business? Well, I'm, I'm I guess I'm not really happy with the, the income from, if you say that we have this number of streams, I think it, it should be worth more money, definitely. Um, uh, about the whole digital thing, I, it's not something I, you know, I like the, the uh, it's very comfortable listening to music in a, in a streaming uh, sort of um, way. Uh, so I, I do it as well. I do it all the time, but I still, because I'm I'm old, I like the uh, the album formats, the physical formats still, because I grew up listening to those and having them as a, you know, to listen to music and and, and hold something in your hands at the same time, looking at the cover and reading the lyrics, it's it's hard to beat for me. But I, I realize the younger generations maybe didn't have that even so. Uh, who am I to say? I mean, it's uh, the the music is the most important thing. Maybe not the format, but I I'm not a, a super fan of the digital stuff. But it's only because I'm I'm ancient, you know. I'm a year more ancient than you than you. But uh, I I still I still listen to every format because digital is easier. It's more it's more comfortable when you listen through your PC while you, you are working and all that, and all that, 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 that thing. However, uh, I, I don't think that this uh, vinyl uh, thing is uh, turning the things uh, around because the digital uh, sales are uh, at least uh, 10 times more. Yeah, definitely. I mean, the, the vinyl revival is, I mean, it's it's a fun thing, but I, I don't think it's gonna. Uh, it's just a fun thing. Yeah, it's, it's not gonna change the, the way people listen to music. It's just for us ancient <laughs> people. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> definitely. From the prehistoric times and yes. uh, 2018, uh, you announced that you would enter a hiatus, without mentioning the reasons. In fact, and that you needed some uh, time off to reevaluate what the future holds for the band. Can you now reveal these reasons? Were you able to reevaluate all the things that you wanted or you were just forced to return to action for any reason? Uh, we weren't forced. Uh, I think we, uh, we definitely realized that we wanted to continue as a band. I mean, we were tired of, of we had been touring a lot for, for the album that we were touring at the time. Uh, it all ended uh, up with our guitar player, Roger. He was uh, uh, hospitalized with, with back problems, which made us uh, cancel a few shows. And all of this, I think, led to, uh, you know, maybe we need a, some kind of a break uh, and see what, you know, what's the, f the future worth for us. Mm -hmm. uh, but after some time, we, we sort of gathered uh, and and talked about, you know, is there more stuff to give? Yes, there is, you know. Um, so there weren't any specific reasons for this more than just being a bit worn out by... Just burn out, work. yeah. Just burn yeah. out, yeah. Yeah, can I understand it. Let's go to Bloodbath for a while. And can you tell me how satisfied are you by the survival of the sickest? Do you feel more loose in the group? Uh, just can you please... Hold on for a moment because my son has forgotten his keys and I have okay. to yeah. open the door. Sorry for this, I'm back. No, pro no problem. <laughs> 
So let's go to blood bath. Let's let's do the question from the beginning. Yeah. Let's go to blood bath. How satisfied are you by survival of the sickest? And do you feel more loose in this band, not having to compose all the songs and do the singing and you just play bass and all that things? It's very much uh, a more uh, comfortable position, I would say. Uh, and it's uh, it's a perfect uh, thing to do. So I can take a little bit of rest from the the whole writing, uh, main writer, sort of frontman thing that I do in Catatonia. Uh, I, I totally enjoy being just uh, a guy in the shadows. <laughs> <laughs> the <laughs> raven. Blood, that stuff. Yeah. The it's, raven in bloodbath. <laughs> yeah. No, it's it's perfect for me to to uh, to have that as a contrast. And I'm, I'm super happy with Survival of the Sickest. I think it's, um, it's a total death metal carnival it's uh, it's got everything that we like about death metal in there it's um, you know a little bit old school stuff but it's it's very intense um it it has all of the ingredients that we love about death metal um before the end i'd like you to comment on your guest appearances over the years and how do you feel about them now Starting from uh, "Swallow the Sun" uh, and the song, uh, the song uh, "The Justice of Suffering." Oh well, it's been a long time since I heard this song, but I remember when I did it, I thought it, it turned out really good. Uh, the, I even went to Finland to record that. It was a little bit before the times when you could just send files. Uh, yeah, like yeah. Record from your home and send yeah, the files. Exactly. Uh, you also recorded a song with Arian, and you even played live uh, with uh, with this band. But I don't think that uh, Arian allows his artist. He wants to to be in his studio to in order to record. Did, did that thing happen in this case? Or in your case as well? Oh yeah, yeah. I went to uh, to Netherlands to to record in his studio. So, and that was a really nice experience. Um, I stayed there for a, a couple of days and, and it was very relaxed and, and professionally made by Ari and the whole uh, visit was uh, super creative and, and fun. Yeah, I've been in his place too for a couple of days as well. And yeah. It was, it, it's really fun and it's a, it's a really, he's a really great guy to work oh, yeah. with. Super. And you also recorded with uh, Long Distance Calling, the song Nearing Grave. Yeah, it was fun because they have been mostly an instrumental band before um, mm -hmm. and we toured with them uh, and I knew uh, John, the bass player from before, so he asked me um, and I got totally free hands to write the lyrics and the whole uh, sort of vocal arrangements and everything. Uh, it was really fun to do that and I think it turned out really well. The, the guys seemed happy about the, the final result, the result as well. So. Um, really interesting uh, to do something, especially for a band that's mainly instrumental, to, to come in there and just take over <laughs> as a singer. So it's a <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, uh, uh, it's really challenging to do that thing. Oh, yeah, definitely. To change the, the status of a band. Exactly. So I had to, uh, you know, do it respectfully. Yeah, <laughs> and carefully. Yeah. Um, Pantheon, Pantheon 1, is it called or Pantheon I? Uh, I, I think. Pant and I, yeah, uh, from the song Ascending. It was super interesting to do because it's such a, a different song for me, uh, music-wise. It had all, all these uh, black metal riffs and blast beats and stuff, but I think it, it turned out really cool because they wanted the contrast from from the whole black metal thing and then have my vocals doing uh, something completely different, but still not straying from you know, the the sort of the darkness in the song and the, the message of the song. So super interesting to do something so different for me. Have you listened to your participation in Off the Cross? Um, do you remember that EP that you sang to? Sorry, what was that? The the band Off the Cross. I have I, I, I have seen it, but I haven't heard it. Oh, uh, yeah, it's fairly recent, I think. It's yeah. only three years or something 
uh, this was different because the guy who he was the, the main guy contacted me and he had already written like vocal melodies and, and lyrics so I just sang whatever he wanted mm-hmm. so it was kind of a quick thing yeah. I, I think it turned out well but I haven't really heard it uh, since I did it you know yeah, yeah. and the ocean the ocean uh, collective is you, you've done a few things with them the, during the last years yeah <laughs> I guess you're friends with the band yeah, we're good friends. Uh, we just toured with them in the, in, uh, the yeah. U.S., Canada, and uh, I got the chance to do uh, one of the songs uh, live at at one point. So it's uh, it was a nice experience as well. Uh, but they're they're super uh, talented band, uh, very easy to work with. Mm-hmm. 